All right, hello there boys and girls. We are solving quadratics. We're getting into the thick of this where it's getting more and more complex. Uh, we're using a technique that's called completing the square. And before we do that, I want to show you just two examples that sort of set the stage. First one is one where we have x appearing only one place. Uh, this is where we normally would use this technique called extracting the square root. And just to review, we're trying to get at that x, we're trying to get that by itself, so we're going to take away the layers, we're going to work from the outside to the inside. Right next to the x is the subtracting the 2, right next to this parentheses is the square, right next to that but outside is the 1 third, and the final out, outermost layer is the 7. So I'm going to work in the reverse by subtracting 7 from both sides, and then I get 1 third x minus 2 squared equals 3. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, or multiply by the reciprocal. Multiplying by the reciprocal, this fraction is multiplying by 3. And that makes sense, because 3 times 1 third gives me 1, and that just cancels, and I get x minus 2 squared equals, well, if I multiply this side by 3, I get 9. Just make sure you don't make the mistake of dividing by 1 third and somehow thinking that this is 1, but it's not, it's 9. Now I can take the square root of both sides, and I get x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus, the square root of 9 is 3. And then finally I write my solution as x is equal to add 2 to both sides, 2 and then plus 3, or 2 minus 3. So my solutions are x, and I'll use bracket notation here, 5 and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Okay, that's not a point. Those are the two solutions for x, 5 and negative 1. Okay. So this is a very powerful technique, um, but it has to be set up just right for us. And we can get a solution to anything. So I've just kind of put in random numbers here, and you'll see it's not going to be a pretty solution, but it is going to be a mathematically correct solution. So again, working from the outermost layer to subtract 13 from both sides, I get minus 10. And then x plus 2.1, it's okay to have decimals. And I'm going to take away 13 from 20 and I get minus, uh, that's a 13, minus 33. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 10. So I get then x plus 2.1 squared equals positive 3.3. Okay, so we're not going to be scared off by those decimals. I take the square root of both sides and I get x plus 2.1 equals, well, we don't have a nice round solution, and I could go to a decimal, but I'm going to keep it exact for now and do plus or minus just radical 3.3. There's nothing wrong with keeping it in exact radical form. And then I'm just going to subtract 2.1 from both sides, and I get my two solutions. X is 2.1, sorry, minus, when I subtract it, minus 2.1 plus radical 3.3, or I'll get x is equal to negative 2.1 minus radical 3.3. Okay, now these are not pretty solutions, but they're real solutions. I could take a calculator and I could get a decimal approximation for them. Um, square root of 3.3 is going to be about like 1.7 or something like that. And if I'm adding that to negative 2.1, I get, might get like a negative uh, 0.4. Here, when I'm subtracting, I get might get a negative uh, like 3.8 or something like that. But you can check and see. All right. Well, what happens if I'm given a problem and it isn't written in this perfect form where x only appears once in parentheses with a square notation out there? What do I do then? So we are going to learn to solve these by the completing the square technique. So, for instance, if I had something like um, x squared. Um, plus 6x um, minus 3 equals 0. All right. If I go to factor this, I go to factor this, I'm not going to find two numbers that multiply to make 3 and that add up to make 6. That's just not possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a series of steps that will get me into a form like those last two problems that I can solve. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take and get rid of any constant number and just leave an opening to complete the square. By adding 3 to both sides, I'll get this. Okay. Now, what I'm looking for is, I'm, my, my goal is to make this be factored with x 
plus or minus some number equal to a number. Because if I can get that, I know how to solve it because I just take the square root of both sides. That takes my two x's here down to just one x there. Well, how do I do that? Well, I look at this number here. This is my b number. And I know that if I get any um, quadratic trinomial in which this number cut in half and then squared appears right here, I've got an easily factored perfect square. So half of 6 is 3. It's a plus 3. Plus 3 squared is plus 9. Well, if I add 9 to this side of the equation, I have to add it to that. Otherwise, it's just mathematically different. I don't want to change it, so I just write that there. But now, this is a perfect square. That's what I'm doing. I'm completing the square. It was missing, but I filled in the blank with what it needs to be to com be completed, and I've got a perfect square. All right? If I were to FOIL this out, I would get six, uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 12, and if I wanted to, I could subtract uh, 12 from both sides, and then I'd get exactly what I had up above. All right? So it's reversible. Well, now what do I do? Well, this is pretty easy to solve. I square root both sides, and I get x plus 3, and that's equal to the square root of 12, and don't forget it's plus or minus, and then I can write my solution as x is equal to negative 3 plus radical 12, or x is equal to negative 3 minus radical 12. Okay, now again, I can just take out my calculator and I can type in the numbers and I will get a solution. This is one that is not possible to solve by factoring, but it is possible to solve by completing the square. So you'll see this is a much more powerful technique. Alright, that will get you started. Good luck.